This is Michelle. They are muted, please. They are muted. The host muted me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for we praise you and we give you glory and honor. We swing doors to open heavens, Father, with praise and adoration and thanksgiving to you. Father, today for each and every one, Father, as we enter in your rest, Father, we're praying that each and every one will embrace you as Lord, as they trust in you and uphold and, and make you um, their guide. And Father, as they put their whole heart into who you are and trust you, Father, we're praying that we will rest, Father, in your love, Father. And we're praying that each one will operate in the love that one brother has for another. And we just give you glory in Yeshua's name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, uh, Minister Michelle, for that prayer. I would bless the Lord for what he's doing in our midst. Um, here we are. We see the Lord moving the network from glory to glory by his spirit. And by the grace of the Lord, what I'll do now uh, is to say the the, the global executive directors, each of them will prepare a brief report of your conversations in your various directorates and um, forward it to the Office of International President so that we can um, examine um, your recommendations in, in light of uh, by the next, um, that's possibly end of this month or February, we're going to have a meeting of Global Governing Council. A whole lot of things will be tabled for that. And part of it will be some of the things that we may find very necessary coming from the various groups uh, concerning direction of where we're going. Um, I like to say for the last one year, we basically allowed ourselves to have meetings of the GEC and the Lord was gracious. A number of meetings took place you know, quite a good number from January, right from January, all the way to December meetings, and they were all strategic. And you are seeing part of the outcome of all those meetings is part of what we're seeing here. And, uh, but this year with all uh, certainty, um, some of the core directories will take off as where the Lord has shown. So what it then means is that I need to also let us know that um, we owe the Father everything, a depth of gratitude, everything he done. As I'm going to bring this IMF 2, 2022 stage of the fellowship you know, a, a report, we say this too without any shadow of doubt. Everything has been by grace. And when we say everything, we mean everything. 100% and more. The inspiration, the enablement, the empowerment, the direction, it's all been by him. And some of the things he wants us to do, we didn't have quite, we didn't have the, all the understanding. The one thing he, he blessed us with is the ability to know when he speaks clearly and when he says to do something, even if it's convenient or not convenient. And we, tended to follow the direction as it leads. And what is leading us is this, and we need to hear this. IMF is not a religious organization and will never be by the grace of the Lord. Among the two things the Lord asks, very definitely a demand he made. Number one, he said to, be, to guard the gates of what we're doing 
that it will remain an organism, an organism, which is what we are doing, an organic entity with life of the Lord flowing in and through it to the degree that as it's going, enfolding the remnant across the world, what will be the outcome will be the body, manifestation of the body, how the Lord intended it. Now, somebody may say, then why do we have officers? Why do we have off, you know, some offices and all that? Well, that's a mystery. The Lord says there is going to be a, 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 an, a structure that will carry the organism. So put it this way, leadership is the organizational structure for purpose of giving some order so that the organism does not go the way. There are some movements of the spirits that were, for instance, in this country, there's no need naming them. Today, they are no more. Their problem was that they were vibrant, they believe in Holy Spirit, they embrace Holy Spirit, but they despise authority. They despise leadership. They despise structure. Today, their buildings are where they were maybe 150 years ago. They're a little hot. I'm talking about England. There's one close by us here. Maybe that one can take 30 to 50 people. This was one of the most outstanding revival movements in this country. It's been confined to the dustbin of history. So there are two things the Lord doesn't want his people to go. Listen, where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And if it is liberty of the spirit, it will produce the outcome of what the Lord says in his word. So there must be liberty. And that's why in IMF, you flow with your gifts and callings. Your gift makes a room for you. And you are not known by anything. You are not known by your money or your stature or whatever. There is room for everybody to flow. But then the Lord says, without order, by the same spirit, everything will be meaningless. So if you have a local assembly where God does what he likes, you're going to have nothing at the end of the day. So that is why we have a structure where we have global trustees that you know, hold the vision in trust along with the vision holder. And then we have a global governing council that is responsible for making policies. And we have a global executives that assist the international president to execute those policies and put them to work. Well, by the grace of the Lord, if the Lord tarries, there may come a time when Pastor Grace and I may not be able to travel and do all that. We simply go on to the role of vision holder. And so I want us to know that the Lord is guiding us by his spirit. What we are modeling here is what it will be if the Lord tarries in the future. We are modeling it what the Lord wants it to be. So we thank the Lord who by his grace has made it all possible. Without him, nothing will happen. So all honor goes to him. And before we also continue, as we did on the opening day, we, we, we observe a moment of silence for our heroes of the faith who in our time, they were heroes of the faith. They finished their pilgrimage and they went. You know what? Apostle, she went up by day. The role she played in IMF was definite. Breakthrough in Ireland was by the grace of the Lord upon her and upon her apostle Albert. She finished her tenure. She moved on to glory. She was with us in Open Gate 2021. And nothing gladdens my heart than to see what the Lord has done in apostle Albert and the children. If you know family, you see, they are intimate families and they are intimate. They had an intimate family. So it takes grace to do what we have seen. And we appreciate that, Lord, for that. Then Apostle Constance Malaji was a member of the Advisory Council and the uh, Board of Trustees of IMF South Africa. She also ran her race and has gone to be with the Lord. And by the grace of the Lord, we appreciate his grace upon Apostle Advocate Rufus Malaji, the widow and the children and the grandchildren, and I am a South Africa, just as the Lord has encouraged Apostle Albert and 
um, uh, the children and foundation ministries Ireland and worldwide and IMF Ireland. And the third person is Pastor David K. Fala, President IMF Sierra Leone. He wasn't at the IM, he wasn't at Open Gate. He had been with IMF before, but somehow they got disconnected. So after Open Gate, that day or the next day, so I reached out to him. He shouted, and you know what? He began to walk day and night. He began to reach out, even began to reach out to other places to restart the fellowship. And then the fellowship began to move on. And this last year, you know, he finished his pilgrimage. His widow, uh, uh, Sabiantu, and the daughter, we give the Lord grace for the way he has encouraged them. And IMF, by the grace of the Lord, just as Apostle Albert testified, IMF stood with these three families in the year to the glory of the Father. So before I continue, may we all one more time, just take a moment this time to just say, Lord, we submit to your will, and we thank you for your grace upon the widowers and the children of the departed. Let's take one minute. If you can, let's do this. One minute, let's put off all our videos for one second, for a minute, every one of you. That's significant. Every one of us, put off your videos, one minute. May the grace of our Heavenly Father rest upon the Obadei family, upon the Malaji family and the Kefala family, upon the ministries of the departed. May the Lord enable all of us who are alive to run our race to the end. And on that glorious day, as the dead in Yeshua rise first, may we also all be raptured up in Yeshua Jesus' name. Everybody say amen and put on your video. Amen. 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 In 2000, they had gone to Jamaica. It didn't work. They'd gone to um, um, Mexico. It didn't work. In 2000, in the year 2000, they sent somebody to Pastor Grace and I, December 30th, 2000, 2000. You know, our son elect was just a few, it was just about one month and a few weeks old. Somebody came from Austin with a message that they wanted to come to Nigeria. We put together a conference May. 2001. This may will be 20, 21 years that they came, Apostle Vance and a team. So we thank the Lord for them, the investment they made, the mentorship what they poured into our lives, and the, the, the truth they deposited in IMF that was at the foundation. By 2004, when the Lord asked them to hand over that they had done the assignment, you know what? They had truly done a solid work, and we bless the Lord for them. May the Lord bless them in Yeshua's name. Amen. And we thank the Lord for the global trustees, those who have, you know, worked with Pastor Grace and I, Dr. Cosmos and Dr. Adiola and Bishop Stafford and his wife. We thank the Lord for that relationship stretching 25 years, for four years plus before Apostle Vance came. There was a relationship where we are modeling what we are doing now at the city level of Owerri. What we are doing now is just telegraphing what happened in Owerri, the emergence of the city church. So we thank the Lord for that working together. And then the Global Governing Council, in addition to these trustees, Apostle Fred and Pastor Kathleen in Detroit, Pastor Jeremy and Liz in, in UK, adding to this, that is 
the council, and we bless the Lord for that. We bless the Lord for the global executive. There are these things were rolled yesterday. The global executive, if we move from the U USA, you have Apostle Terrence, Apostle Victoria Blount. We have uh, Apostle Brenda Jamison. We have Teacher Stephanie Foster. We have um, Apostle Catherine Jones. And we have uh, uh, Apostle Ron and Pastor Janda uh, Shepherd. Then the Ireland, Apostle Albert Obade, UK. We had Pastor De uh, Dupe and her husband, Elder Bode. You had Apostle uh, Kolade and Pastor Nkechi. You had Apostle uh, Overseer Robert Keating and uh, 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 his wife, Lady Annette. Then you had the legal advisors, um, Evangelist Veronica Ikechi and uh, Pastor Ross and uh, uh, Prophetess um, uh, um, Rebecca Monioro. And then you go to Africa, Bishop Xavier and uh, uh, Prophetess Audrey in South Africa. And then um, uh, Apostle Pat Goera in uh, Zimbabwe and uh, Apostle Mike and Pastor Jumoke in Nigeria versus these are the boots on the ground, so to say. And then the national presidents, we bless the Lord for all of them. I'm saying this to say that even though I'm giving this report, it's not us, it's all of these ones. And then we thank the Lord for Mission Central. You've heard of Mission Central. These are the group of ministers the Lord brought together that work with us and not in local assembly. No, that's not our mindset but as catalysts of what the Lord will do so that they will be there, whether it was whatever way, they'll be there, render their skills, everything laid down together to create a critical mass that made the office of president have a lift into the dimension of, of grace with which will function. And it's quite a long list. I won't be able to name all of them. Maybe at some time before we go, we'll ask all of them to identify themselves to see the large number. And when we began to run the Arise Online Church with our walls, the number exploded because there were people across the world all connected by the shared value that local assembly, that concept is almost gone. Apostle Colada said something, you all didn't pick it up. A lot of people are stuck in the old, you may not be able to get the new, Church is no longer about location, it's about connection. Who are you connected with by the spirit? Where you connect, that's where your church is. And if you don't get that, one may be past, one may run in past tense. Connection, that's what makes an, a, a, what is a congregation? People who are connected by the spirit to express the presence and power of the Lord. Men and brethren, we thank the Lord for them. And for that reason, IMF will, 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 will be celebrating 21 years. It's a milestone. 20 is a milestone. 21 is a milestone because that's when you become a man. 21 will celebrate it with a global apostolic and prophetic summit, GAPS. We've not done GAPS for over 10 years. Apostle they remember GAPS, you know? Okay, GAPS yes, sir. is going to hold this year. The second weekend of May, that is to say, May 13 to 15, 2022, is going to be two dimensional. It's going to be what we call a hybrid gaps. There will be a, an online version on this Zoom room, on this Zoom room online, May 13 to 15. Then there will be a boots on the ground in the holy city of Owere, Nigeria, the Jerusalem of this commission. So, Bishop Stafford. When you get to worry, call the brethren to worry. Tell them, hey, this thing has come upon you, upon a worry. And uh, please, Dr. Cos, please, we want this thing to, we want a meeting in a worry. And then the brethren will connect you to a worry, prophesy over a worry, speak into a worry. There's been so much trouble over where the enemy has contended for the city, but that contention must cease in Yeshua's name. Amen. So it's going to be a, a hybrid conference online and boots on the ground. Those in West Africa, if you're able to travel and it works for you, fine. Those in different parts of Nigeria, get into a where and let there be an excellent remembrance and it's going to be something else by the grace of the Lord. 
Now, the operating environment for 2021 was exceedingly challenging. It started in 2020, as you all know, COVID-19 struck. And 2020, some churches were open to, listen, the, the, the congregation we are part of, where we meet in MPAC Assembly Hall, where everything we are doing was basically bettered, apart from Nigeria, it was in that place, is the Bethel of the movement. Do you know what? From March 2020 till today, we have not met. We have not met. We are hoping that if this wave gets over, then we can meet. We have not met. We have not received anybody in our house because of this same situation. You know, the Alamus have written twice, they want to come, say, look at the situation. We have not, we're not open yet because you know, it's office and residence and everything. And so for that, the, the simplest thing to do was simple, you know, let's wait. And the Lord, I sense the Lord said to us, come into your chamber. And brothers and sisters, this thing is real. Low. Right now, we have over four key people in our fellowship that are under attack. So it's for real. Let me give you the statistics. COVID-19 has 303 million, 303, not three, not 33, 303.964 million people infected in the period under review. Deaths, 5.499, almost 5 million deaths as of today. Recovered people, 258 million. Currently infected, 40 million and 70,000. 40 million currently. Those whose case is mild, 39.9 million. Those whose case is critical, critical, needing hospital care, 95,550. Even though it's 0.2% of those total infection, brothers and sisters, this thing is real. Please as much as lies in you, do not allow these conspiracy theories to just make you to miss it. And this thing is for real, you know, so let's be, take our time. So that's the operating environment. Listen, we understand that the enemy's plan is to shut down the gospel. But in that operating environment, the Lord has done great things for us that IMF has not shut down as a matter of fact, IMF is alive and IMF is expanding and grace is our work. So by the grace of the Lord in North American continent, the IMF USA is strong and vibrant. By the grace of the Lord in South America continent, the Lord has taken a, a Pastor Emilia Muteweri to Falkland Island. And so we now have a presence in the continent and our friend, you know, we're still discussing with our friend, in the continent to see where they can, but at least we have a presence in South America, two continents there. The Caribbean Basin, through the work of our sister prophet Christian Codner, the Caribbean Basin, there's a life there. And through the work of the Global School of Ministry, one of the agencies, the Lord gave Pastor Grace and I a vision for the body of Yeshua. Through that, people are connecting to this commission. So that region of the world, the Lord has a presence in the same period. Then Europe. UK, Ireland, Italy have joined the League of the Model Chapters. And through these three chapters, you know what? Europe outreach is being made into Europe, you know, and we are grateful to the Lord for what is going on. Then Africa, the work of the Lord IMF, you know, West Africa, you know, Liberia, Sierra Leone, Cote d'Ivoire, and by the grace of the Lord, Ghana, we restarted a relationship. We restarted in Ghana now. Then Nigeria, which is the big one. Then Cameroon, through Apostle John Ashua, an evangelist scholar, Cameroon. Then by the grace of the Lord, you know, right here with us is DROC, Democratic Republic of Congo, through Pastor Carlos Likoma. We now have an IMF. We just graduated some 97 people in the Global School of Ministry in that place. And those 97 are now the nucleus of IMF in DRC. Then we have uh, Rwanda and that's Central Africa, DRC uh, and Cameroon and uh, Rwanda. 
And by the grace of Lord, the man in Burundi is connecting back. And then in East Africa, uh, uh, Kenya, the Lord has used Pastor Walter to reconnect the grace choir from Kayone. Pastor Walter is going to spearhead the recovery of the uh, vision in Kenya. Then in Uganda, you know, Pastor Evelyn Baguma, you know, has been challenges with technology, but Uganda is there. And then by the grace of Lord, through the Global School of Ministry, we have brought Pastor Lamex Oguma in Northern Uganda, actually land is right here with us in this place. So Uganda is revived all again. Then Tanzania, we have Pastor Oscar Scan and uh, 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 Apostle Helen, Helen Sojia. We believe the Lord is going to use them to revive the fortunes. Then you go down South Africa, Zambia, Apostle Benjamin Sinena and the team, uh, Zimbabwe, uh, Bishop Jonathan Chatedoka and, her, and his team are now on. And then South Africa, by the grace of the Lord, Prophet Zimpomo Tlasedi with her team, they are here in this place. And then there are outreaches to the nations in that region. And by the grace of the Lord, in, in the North Africa region, there's this brother, Apostle Paulus Gabriel, who has been coming to with us through the prayer. And then Prophetess Margie Tawadros, we are trusting the Lord that a vibrant chapter will eventually take off among the Arabs who are part. And in South Sudan, we have a contact there, a sister who is there. And we are trusting the Lord that the work there will go on. And then in the Middle East, we have the teacher Sima Kale and the work she's doing and the people she's training in the School of Ministry who are going to be ministers this year. And that is, you see, IMF coming out of that work. And then in India, Apostle Jacob Chako and the people in India, and you have the people who are in the other Asian nations, David Mang in Malaysia, Alonso Philip in Sri Lanka, and uh, Vivek Kumar Das in Nepal, and uh, those who are in Bhutan and uh, uh, Myanmar, and those nations, and our, our sister Apostle Christine Cheung in Hong Kong, China. And then in the island, the Pacific island of Fiji Island, down, down, down to the uttermost part of the earth, Apostle Elisivani uh, Lehuli, you know, who've been working on him, working with him, mentoring him, preparing him for the IMF Fiji. So what, are, what am I saying? The six inhabited continents of the world, the Lord has spread IMF. Not by might, not by power, not by budget, not by money, up to today, the international office has not have a budget because there's none to budget on. It's been by grace. It's been by grace. So if we're talking about grace, we have experienced that grace. And it's that regard that some of the extra sacrifice that people make in terms of skills to bring to the table is so vital. And brothers and sisters, in order to build on this, you know, we, we, there are some decisions the Lord has showed me, part of which is that just as we thank Lord for teacher Stephanie, who has functioned as a chief of staff there in Chicago, now she has greater responsibilities in IMF and other things. So we're going to also have in Europe, we're going to have a, a, a chief of staff in Europe and chief of staff in Asia, Middle East Asia and in, in uh, Africa, and they, are, they will be announced to you in due season whose job will be to help to coordinate and pull in things on the behalf of the office of president to make sure that the momentum the Lord has given to us will not slow down. His grace has been exponential. And the key thing is this. We tell people, we are not doing organization. We are not looking to rule anybody. We are not looking to run your ministry or your congregation for you. We, the Lord sent us to just build a framework of relationship healthy relationship, clean relationship, relationship so that we can relate as brothers and sisters in the Lord, in holiness, in purity of heart, loving one another and facilitating one another. So if the Lord wants Pastor Dupe to go and do some mission work in East Africa, she doesn't need to carry tons of money. If, I mean, I know her, she's just simple and complicated. She doesn't carry whatever the Lord has done for her in her mind. So they put her in a, 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 a two-bedroom house. Uh, maybe they have one roof there. She will just thank the Lord. As long as she has a bathroom, 
She has a brush where she can brush her teeth. That's it. Mission, here we go. You know, and that is the idea. Say, don't carry script. Don't carry credit card. When you are going on mission, you don't need to carry, you don't need to carry tons of money. Buy your ticket. Okay, have some backup. Like the president, some places I go over the years, you know what, I take a, a pay for my hotel and I thank God for rise me to the assembly, the bread and there supporting. But basically the vision of the Lord is a network, a rail road. It says, if you build a good railroad, whatever you place on that road, it will carry it. Firewood, it will carry. Human beast, it will carry. Fuel, it will carry. In the same way, it says, if we build this network together, it will work for every single one. It is wired into the vision that all who the Lord used to make it, you can fulfill the assignment of the Lord in your life for it. And so, as Isaiah 60 Five verse eight says, "If the new wine is found in a cluster, destroy it not, for there's a blessing in it." So when people are not able to see what we see, and they think they will, and it looks like the best thing for them, as they think, is to move on, we say, "Praise the Lord!" You know what? We are about a work of rebuilding the broken wall of the kingdom church. We are not here to do denomination. We are not here to do organization. The fellowship. The Lord has been helping the fellowship. And it's been exceptional. So brothers and sisters, I want us to say something to us. Each of us can help the process by, by simply em, embracing some basic truths. And in that regard, let me say something I shared with the brethren in India. I mean, in Asia yesterday. Somebody may ask, why is it that we're interested in Asia? Why? It is not a carnal interest. It is a divine vision. In Acts 16, verse 6, we are told that now when they had gone throughout Phrygia and the region of Galatia and were forbidden of the Holy Ghost to preach the word in Asia, Holy Spirit said, Paul, you wanted to go to Asia? No, not the east. And then the next thing, they saw a vision. He saw a vision. The man of Macedonia, beckoning to them, in verse 9, he said, come and help us. He concluded the Lord wanted them in Macedonia. So look at the picture. Instead of moving east to Asia, Holy Spirit said, no, move west. He moved west. It was Rome. And to Rome, Paul went. And Paul was the vessel that Yeshua gave the master plan of his church, what the church ought to be. The church ought to have a fivefold that will guide it. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers working together to empower. And when you have the fivefold, you will have kingdom ministry. Because the fivefold means I do my bit, you do your bit, everybody does his bit, and the body is impacted. The body is impacted according to Ephesians 4, 11, 12, for the work of ministry. Why is it important? If we are not, creating, if we are not producing manpower in our ministries, IMF will atrophy. If we are not producing manpower, we just join IMF. Then we come to IMF open gate all alone. Next year, we come all alone. The national meeting will come all alone. It won't be, it won't be difficult with time. IMF will atrophy. And part of what the Lord has used to keep IMF vision alive is the work we are doing in the master class in the Global School of Ministry, which is teach, train, equip, activate, release. Where did it come from? The Pauline epistles. Where did it come from? The Pauline epistles says that that is how to do church. That's how Yeshua did it. That's how Paul did it. And through that, there's constant flow because the church is ordained not to be a pond that gathers brackish water, but a river of living water distributing life. The church is ordained not to be a morgue or mortuary where you entomb destinies of people, the church is ordained to be a hatchery of gifts and callings, always producing, every two years or so producing. Yeshua took three and a half years to produce. Out of unlearned fishermen of Galilee and Judea, he produced the apostles we hear today. Brothers and sisters, what is the point I'm trying to make? We get to get this clear. The divine revelation. 
Paul went to Europe and preached the gospel. And in Rome, the religious capital of Europe, he was beheaded for the faith. But before he was beheaded, all the revelation God gave Paul was put together in what is called today the Pauline epistles, the epistle to the Romans, 1st Corinthians, 2nd Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, um, uh, uh, Philippians, uh, Colossians, 1st uh, Thessalonians, 2nd Thessalonians, 1st Timothy, 2nd Timothy, um, Philemon, Titus, and, the, and then the, the, the book of uh, Hebrews. These Pauline epistles is the master plan with the exact way to do church and we will make it on the last day without shame. So the point I'm making is this. At some point in history, Paul died in the first century. Second century, in the second century, the first outstanding spiritual reality of the second century, I want all of you to listen to it. It was in the second century, they began to take away the fivefold. By the third century, they took away. By the fourth century, it wasn't just taking away the fivefold. By the fourth century, between AD 310, when the Edict of Toleration of, it was signed in Milan between Emperor Constantine and Emperor Lysinus between 301 and 311. And between that day and 381, when Emperor, you know, um, uh, one of the emperors finally effected the union of church and state, the marriage of church and state. The church, as Yeshua put it on earth, was off ramp. He had gone away. The church used to be loyal to one head, Yeshua, Jesus, only. Now, the church had a new husband, the empire, the Roman empire. The church was led by the fivefold. Now, the church was led by an episcopal system that was a pyramid. The church used to have the, the Bible. Everyone read the Bible. Under the new dispensation, individuals were not permitted to read the Bible, only priests. Then the church used to be led by Holy Spirit, empowered by Holy Spirit. In the fourth century, they said they didn't need Holy Spirit. What did they need? Council of men, theologians, wise men. They began to do what we call creedal Christianity, Christianity of creed not life again. So the fourth century was the greatest tragedy that befell the church. It is so sad that historians have not identified this. In the fourth century, the church as a living, loving organism, the kingdom church was totally taken out of the way and then another entity came in. Look at it this way. This is an iPhone 11. This is a precious asset. This is my office. My second office, that is this. Everything is here. Everything is here. All right. So this is the church that came from Jerusalem. Paul declared it in Rome. What happened in Rome was in a period of, from, of 70 years or thereabout, something happened like this. Religion replaced relationship. And religion was what was exported to Europe, I mean, across Europe, exported to North America, exported to Africa, exported to Asia. And brothers and sisters, the Lord says in Ephesians 5, 26, 27, that before the Lord returns, the Lord is going to wash his church with the water of the world. He's going to release the potent power of the world to recapture what the church is and what it should be about and what should be restored. And brothers and sisters, I want to put it to you that without any shadow of that, the Lord told me that International Missus Fellowship was going to be one of the critical components of the restoration process. And by the grace of the Lord, that is why he raised Global School of Ministry, you know, by the grace of the Lord. 100 years after Susa Street, he raised the Global School of Ministry. The master class. And for us in London, he says, go and model a kingdom organism that's not church the way it is known, that's not based on the, on the, on the characteristics of Rome. And so what am I saying this? 
This is one of the reasons why the Lord wants us to have an Asia focus, that the church in Asia did not receive the benefit of the Pauline epistles over the years. And the Lord says, now is the time. Asia is the most populated continent. One nation alone, China, 1.3 billion. One nation alone, India, 1.2 billion. So China and India alone have more than one, I mean, they have more than a quarter of the world population. By the time you add Indonesia, add Pakistan, add some other countries, Asia accounts, out of six continents, Asia alone accounts for one third of the whole world. And this is a continent where you have the largest number of gods. There are probably more than a thousand gods in Asia that people worship. And the Lord wants the body. Nobody should say it doesn't concern you. The body to have an interest in Asia, to have an interest in Asia, but it is not to go and carry and export religion to Asia. No, it is to proclaim the gospel of the kingdom, to demonstrate the gospel of the kingdom, to assist, to encourage, to strengthen. And I want to say this to all of you, brothers and sisters, let me not offend you. In the gospel of the kingdom, there's only one person that matters. His name is Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Messiah. So we all decrease that he would increase. We promote him, we project him, we lift him up. The reason why IMF has succeeded is that people have not come to meet Apostle George and Pastor Grace. They've come to meet the Lord. That is why. And because of that, we see the council, governing council, global executive. You see how the Lord uses each one. By what every joint supplies, you see what we receive today. Just wait a minute. The U.S. team are coming because they needed to wake up early. We've seen from the U.K., but the soon we see them. By the time we finish tomorrow, you will, all of us will be edified. And so, brothers and sisters, we need to do something. The Lord wants us to restore the fivefold. The Lord wants us to restore the priesthood of all believers, IMF. I'm talking about the ancient landmarks that Apostle Vance brought 21 years ago to worry what he shared with us, the fivefold, what he shared with us, the priesthood of all believers. They, they call it, according to Bishop Bill Hammond, his own mentor, is the saints movement where every believer is called. Our job as leaders is to help everyone to know the call of the Lord, the special grace of the Lord upon their life. Amen and brethren. The Lord wants us to know that we ought to be an open fellowship where people can come and connect. And that's why the, 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 the groups we are forming today, the directorates that are taking off are so important because when they take off, there'll be interest areas, there'll be connections, there'll be places where your grace connects because Paul says, henceforth know we no man after the flesh, but by the spirit. Once we know people by the spirit, we're not going to see them as male, female. Since we got to know Pastor Dupe 2005, we don't know her by the flesh. We don't know her. What we know is the grace of the Lord upon our life. Simple. Is that grace that we respond to? Is that grace we respond to? And that applies to every one of us together. The, let's come to the place where we recognize the grace of the Lord upon people, embrace the grace, and there are principles the Lord taught us that I want to share with you that helps. A lot of people tend to think, oh, no, no, that, that, do this, do that. The Lord told me something. I share with Dr. Koss and others in a worry. And that is, if I'm in covenant relationship with somebody, what he or she does is besides the point. It's besides the point. I owe no one nothing but love. Except you decide to fall away, then I can't help. But as for, you offending me, I am under divine impulsion not to allow that offense to be cloud my judgment. In other words, I go to the Lord in prayer and I don't go to report you, I go to report myself. Why should I take offense? Why? And that has helped me. Brothers and sisters, I recommend that. 
I recommend that. You see, offense is, is takeable or rejectable. Can we say, let me use the word of Pastor Enoch, our, our worship leader, <laughs> bendable, shakeable. Offense is takeable or shakeable. Shake away offense. Regarding offense, don't take, don't give, but even if it's given to you, it can only work if you give it space. And I reject to give it space. And if we're going to go ahead, we must have that attitude where it doesn't matter. The Paul, Peter put it this way. First Peter 4, verse, 9, verse 8. He says, the kind of faith, the kind of love that forgives a multitude of sins, that doesn't take it to account. So, you know what, brothers and sisters, we are in this. It's just about love. It's about, that's why we say to people, be sincere. If you come to this network with an agenda, you are coming to hunt for souls. You are coming to look for somebody to take. You miss it because there's a covenant governing this fellowship. If you also come here to strive for position and power, you are making a mistake. Listen to this. Nobody strives for listening. All our national presidents will testify. Not one has been by election. I'll be sharing with you that we refer from today, the global executive will be having uh, uh, thing, but let me just give you a little bit to illustrate. A few days ago, Pastor Jerry, Apostle Jerry, contacted me. He said, oh, Apostle George, look, we have served. We think it's time to another person. We have done our best. Please, please. Then I asked him a question. I mean, he had said it before last year. He didn't think it. I said, but my brother, get on with the work. But this time, he said it it just shocked me that, well, it's really, he and his wife have done their best, and this is the Lord's doing. Okay, so the next step I did, I called the chairman of the board of trustees of IMF Island. I said, Apostle Albert, he said, yes, I said, please, we have, this, we have this need now. There are two people now, or a number of people, please, I want you to tell me, of the people we have in IMF Island, who do you believe is time? Then I asked Pastor Cecilia, I asked Apostle John Ashu, and there was Pastor Grace. Let's tell the brothers and sisters, with one accord, with one accord, there's a witness in the spirit that Pastor Kazim and Ola of Ross Common were from this month of January. Can you spotlight them? Taking the global executive will do a short meeting just to formalize the process, this couple are going to be the new president of IMF Island. They didn't have to lobby for it. They didn't have to complain for it. They didn't have to do anything. As a matter of fact, their concern, no, 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 no. Their concern was rather, oh, you know, is this, is this being done in good faith? Is there any offense? That was their concern because they love people and they relate with people. And you know what? I told them that, no, there's no offense there. And by the grace of the Lord, that's how IMF is. Yes, you can take away the spotlight. Apostle, uh, Pastor Kazim and Apostola of Ross Common, Zion Family Friend, uh, Church, you are welcome. You are welcome. We're going to do the formalities. I just wanted to illustrate that, brothers and sisters. We don't do those things. We don't do tribalism. When we started, there were so many Igbos everywhere. Igbos everywhere. Igbos, Igbati, 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 Igbati. <laughs> what could we do? Those are the people available. But let me tell you, brothers and sisters, the yearning of our heart was everybody. And what the Lord did was amazing. The Lord began to do his own way. And you know what? By the grace of the Lord, Every tribe, every nation, every people, their space. Brothers and sisters, IMF, let brotherly love continue. So we have gotten the plan for what to do. Apostle Vance and Dr. Koss, listen, if I went back today from Open Gate, I tell you, I am well fed. The people that gave this morning, they simply brought in beautiful elements of the world and the ones that will come today, praise God, and the ones tomorrow, praise God, but listen to me, brothers and sisters, we got gold. This is something, this is something, hear me, this is not like fellowship that is the extension of a man's personal ministry. This is a sacred trust. 
This is a sacred trust from Elohim that he wants to he wants to bet in the earth stream an expression of his body connected by his spirit, brothers and sisters. And that's why the Lord said to me, brotherly love, continue. We got to do something strategic. The year 2021, please, we'll need 50 churches and ministries in Europe and America. 50 ministries, churches, and families. Who will invest at least $50 each month to 25 ministers in Asia, 25 ministers on the front line in Africa, at least $50 each month to support them. You will know the people. You'll be praying for them. They'll be praying for you. Let brotherly love continue. Those who can, if there are some who can do $100 because of your, uh, your level of income and you can do, praise the Lord, you tell me. Who, those who can do more, you tell us. We're going to, we want to make sure there's something that happens in the third world we want to guard against. It is a case where some people are very aggressive. You see them as we come to this conference, they take screenshots, screenshots, screenshots. Tomorrow now, they go to Facebook. Even today, they begin to make friends. And then before you know, they are asking you, I need this, I need this. And then one person has gathered 20 people supporting, five people, 10 people, and another brother somewhere doing even a more critical work. Who needed support? Nothing. And so for that reason, we we'll say to everybody, those who will be part of this, please, you all deal with the Office of International President and the director of WeCare, the Global Executive Director of WeCare, Pastor Emilia, to coordinate this process so that we can know who is supporting whom. Then we match you with the person for prayer, for relationship, for support that it will go on. Let it be that this brother love we are talking about is not by mouth. Let our pocket speak for us. So ministry that can, out of once a month, you can do a mission day that, oh, we have this missionary we are supporting in Africa or we are supporting in North America, I mean, sorry, in Asia, and please, let's, whatever you have put it in, you bring it together, it comes to $50 or more, you put it into the till. If it's, if you're in the US, we'll create an account within the IMF UK US account to put it. If you are in UK, if you are in, if you are in Ireland, if you are in Italy, so that this thing can be properly done and accountable, and the director of finance will be there, the director of we care will be there, and then a few other people to make sure that it truly happens. 50 churches and ministries or congregations that will say in the name, in the interest of brotherly love to support a minister in Africa or Asia. And we are going to work with Pastor Apostle Jacob Chako in India and to, to make sure that the ones in the other nations and then at least one one in the other nations, then India will have more because of its size. Brothers and sisters, this is practical love. And I want to stop here. There are many other things to speak about. And uh, because I've spoken this much, my ministry time, Pastor Grace will take the ministry time, you know, to, to release the word. And I want to say this to us, brothers and sisters, let brother love continue. And let's enter our rest. Between Dr. Cosmos and Apostle Vance, we got a blueprint. By the time we hear from Bishop Stafford and uh, um, Pastor Jeremiah and Liz, Bishop um, and, and uh, Pastor Tina, and by the time we hear from Pastor Grace this evening, I believe our understanding will be complete. And then all the GEC, by the time we take together all they say, you know what? That would be wonderful. And Pastor Dupe, thank you for challenging all of us to have some downtime for our brain, for our eyes, for our everything in us we i don't think that i don't think anybody will be hot accepting your recommendation you know <laughs> i don't think anybody will be hot taking that recommendation it's such a wonderful thing brothers sisters uh, pastor grace is my timekeeper i don't want to exceed by one minute let's all pray anything remain we'll put it in paper i know pastor grace will commend me for keeping time just let's pray everybody let's pray let's talk to the lord Let's call upon the name of the Lord. 
Let's ask the Lord to have his way. And do what only him can do in our lives. Let him have his way. Let him have his way. Let the Lord have his way. Do what only him can do in our life. Pray that the Lord will continue to keep IMF strong and healthy. Let's pray for the international president that grace will be released to continue to take this at the level it ought to be. Let uh, Pastor Pat Chidakwa is listed on the program to close prayer and make announcement. Could you pray and make announcement? Pastor Pat Chidakwa, is she on the line? Heavenly Father, we thank you. Oh, Heavenly Father, we give you all the thanks. We give you all the honor. We thank you for this fellowship, our Lord. Uh, Father, we've been feeding. You have been feeding us and help us, Lord, to take everything we have learned and impart it to others. Like what you said, that whatever I've given you, uh, take it to other brethren so that they can learn more about you. Thank you, Lord, for teaching us about entering your rests. Help us, Lord, uh, to continue striving to enter in your rest. And Father, teach us as well to practice brotherly love. Let, let us walk the talk. Let us not just practice with talk with our lips, but help us, Lord, to have love for one another, to feel for one another, and to care for one another as you have taught us about love. We give you all the honor, our Lord. We give you all the thanks. We thank you, Lord, for our visionaries. We thank you for our presidents. President, uh, we thank you, Lord, for um, IMF International, all the leaders in all different chapters. May you bless them. May you be with them. Father, we thank you for the youth. We thank you for the way they opened for us, uh, uh, open gates, Lord. Thank you for blessing them. May you be with them. May you open doors for them, Lord, mighty doors that no man can shut. Father, we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory. We bless your name. We bless your name each and every day. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen and amen. 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 Pastor Pat, Amen. did you have any announcement that was given to you to read? Amen. No, Apostle, okay. I do. Okay. Any. All right. Don't worry. Let me just say this quickly uh, by way of announcement before we leave. We are right on time. I believe I'm going to get a special soup from Pastor Grace today. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Uh, we are going to uh, break. Um, I have just a minute to tell you this. Please. The break is one hour, and in any, sorry, the break, we are going to be back here by two. This is an important segment. So, huh? It's already three. Yeah, sorry, four o'clock, sorry, four. <laughs> I was reading it wrongly. Four o'clock, we are going to come back here. So please, if you want to grab a bite, uh, take a snack, take a cappuccino, a tea, whatever, you know what, please do that and return here exactly four. And yeah, by the grace of God, the, all the various um, breakout rooms, the directories, if there were any plans you made for some meeting or conferences this year, please send us a text while you are here so we can synthesize them and look at you know, the things before we leave. Amen? The Lord bless you. Is there anything else? Oh no. Yeah, they will, they will come by four o'clock, four o'clock, okay? Yeah, yeah, when you say, sorry, I'm so sorry. One, uh, be, uh, 55 minutes from now, you return here. Is that okay? 55 minutes from now, you return here. So don't go far. Don't, so you'll not be confused with the UK time, four o'clock, whatever. Just 55 minutes. Look at your watch now. 55 minutes, you are inside here, and we continue. 
Have a blessed time and relax your mind and let these things validate. Practice some of those things Pastor Dupe spoke about and all that. And when we come back, we're going to have a good time. Bless you. Bye-bye.